Um, hi, welcome everybody. I'm super excited to be here. Um, my name is Gabor, and today I'm going to talk about um, scalable authentication um, uh, problems and solutions in big data ecosystems like Apache Spark and Apache Flink. Um, before we go on, uh, hands up please who know um, Apache Spark or Flink. Um, all right, a lot of, quite a lot of people. And who are using it in production? Oh, that's a lot, so I'm facing with experts. Okay, so before we go on, a um, couple of words about myself. So my name is Gabor, I'm working at Apple, and we are building a big data platform with Apache Flink at the moment. Um, and previously I was working at uh, Cloudera, where I was mainly working with uh, Apache Spark and Kafka. And there we have also built a, a big data framework as well. Um, both of the communities has um, <coughs> rewarded my efforts, and as a result I'm on Apache Spark and Flink Commuter at the same time. Um, I'm more than 20 years in the IT industry, <coughs> and my main focus area is 24-7 stream processing plus security. And as a, as a result, we can talk about this a little bit today. Um, yeah, so um, before we go on, just a couple of words about how security nowadays looks like, at least how I see in the, um, in the IT industry. Um, everybody is expecting that security should work out of the box, so I have not seen a single um, big or mid-sized tech company who made the adoption without proper security um, story about. But on the, on the other hand, the, the bad part is that um, not everybody really keen on working on security-related features as a developer. Back in the days when these um, big data products are created, it was pretty high, uh, hard to use. It was gr really cryptic, and um, nowadays uh, the trending is that make it more user-friendly or more developer-friendly. And this feature set, what I'm going to present today, um, is, is um, um, to solve this problem, or at least contribute to, to not having up a situations like this. Um, yeah, what we are going to talk about today. Um, first of all, I would I would show how um, authentication looks like looks like uh, when a single client and single servers uh, server is uh, in place. This can be pretty boring, but I would like to um, show the um, building blocks what we are talking about. Later on, we will slightly touch how Apache Spark and Flink from architecture perspective look like. Um, later on we will see um, what can be the problem when we are authentication at scale. Because there are uh, a lot of problems, we will touch them. And um, I will show later on a um, possible solution which is already implemented, so I would like to emphasize it's in, um, in big production jobs. Um, one can guess uh, which company is using that, but many others are, many, many big uh, players are also using that in production jobs. And later on, um, we will make our hands a little bit dirty, not too much, but I would like to highlight how to implement a small plugin um, which can do external system authentication, which is custom from um, uh, the actual um, Spark and Flink offering perspective. All right, so let's get started. I think this is really obvious. So when um, we talk about uh, authentication, it's, um, it's, a, it's not a brain surgery. So uh, practically, uh, there is a user which has a, a long-lived credentials. It can be many things. Um, these credentials will be then uh, provided to the authentication server. It does the validation. And when it's validated that the user is who they say they are, then the access is granted. And some sort of message will be sent back that, hey, you are allowed to do further operations. Um, in the next couple of slides, we will take a look at what can be sent as a credentials and what can be um, received back, uh, back um, when the access granted is happening. Um, yeah. 
this one I think is also su super obvious. The, the basic um, uh, example is the username is password. Now this is getting deprecated because of several reasons. Hopefully it's happening in the next couple of years. Um, there is also a good example of TLS and SSL certificate. <coughs> and since we are in the big data projects, um, Hadoop is in place still. Um, there is another example is the, the Kerberos GitHub file, which is um, in an oversimplified way is nothing else but a um, cryptic way of plain text username and password. From lifecycle perspective, it's really important that, that these are long-lived credentials. What does it mean? And there is, most of the time, there is no expiration time. Of course, for instance, in the KDC area, one can set an expiration time on password, but normally users are not doing that or, or setting credential expiration type for months or even years. Um, and there is a drawback here. Um, it's pretty hard to, to revoke such credentials when, when it's uh, stolen. So the attack surface is pretty high. And so this must be protected well. Um, the other side, um, what we can get back when uh, the successful authentication is happening is a really good example in the, in the um, white as is just a JWT token. Um, this is known as in the web area. But there are many other um, examples when we take a look at the AWS infrastructure, for instance, the S3 authentication, um, an STS token is, is such a construct. Um, when we compare this um, token, um, um, then there is a significant difference here, um, namely they are short-lived credentials. And uh, it's not uh, super hard to find out why, because there is an expiration time which is set at creation time. Um, for instance, when we take a look at the Hadoop ecosystem, the HDFS token is uh, valid for one day with the default configuration, of course. And this can be enlarged to seven days, but after that, this token is just dead and it must be reobtained to uh, make further operations. <coughs> There's a pretty good um, feature of these tokens. It can be pretty easily revoked when uh, there is a, a security breach. So it, this will limit the attack surface, <coughs> which is pretty good for, for um, production perspective or company perspective. Um, and yeah, um, in the next slide, um, we see quite a lot of things. I don't want to go into the details. The main message here is that when somebody starts a workload, let's say somebody starts a, a streaming or SQL workload, there are components inside the cluster which can and actually doing um, authentication. The first such component is a driver, which is basically um, a coordinator of the, of the uh, Spark job. Um, this can split up the task into smaller pieces and um, it can, uh, and, and actually doing, um, sending uh, tasks to the uh, worker nodes and these worker nodes are executing the, the so small piece of tasks. And the main message here is that both the driver and the worker nodes are doing authentication. This is not a problematic um, thing when we are having a single node cluster. So first of all, uh, somebody is developing something on the, on the local laptop because maybe one or two worker nodes are there and the authentication is scaling. Well, it's super cool. Um, and guess what? When somebody understands Apache Spark, then understands Apache Flink as well. Because um, from architecture perspective, it's almost the same, just a tiny difference here. So when somebody pinpointed that the driver is called here a job manager and the worker node is called task manager and the same applies here. So these, no, these are the node types which, is, which are doing authentication. And it's, um, it's important to say that um, big tech companies are not playing with a uh, couple of nodes. Um, it's not unusual to have thousand node, uh, thousand worker nodes in a, in a production grade job. 
um, and this can cause some some problems. Okay, and what are these problems? Um, there are many. <laughs> At least we have seen many problems, but these uh, two significant problems, which are which we have seen each and every time, um, back in the in the um, days when Hadoop was really shining, there is a single KDC server which is not pretty scaling well. Um, when big wor workloads has been started and uh, there were a lot of these big workloads, the KDC server started to slow down and the, at the end just st uh, stopped responding. Um, once in a while I have seen a KDC server where not even the um, SSH prompt was coming in, so it was pretty hard. <laughs> Um, the other thing is that um, when um, the authentication is done with the old-fashioned way, then each and every node on this cluster uh, are having long-lived credentials. So somebody, when somebody is, is breaking in, steals the authentication, the long-lived ones, then it can be pretty severe for, from company perspective. And yeah, it's pretty hard to, to protect such clusters. What can we do about it? <clears throat> the idea is not um, um, super breakthrough, um, but s uh, scales well. So instead of having long leaf credentials on each and every node, we are just having the long leaf credentials, the, this is the yellow one, only on a single node, uh, which is the job manager in, case, in this case. And it does the authentication with the KDC or any, 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 any other kind of <coughs> authentication server. As a response, we are receiving back a uh, dimension token, which can be any kind of token. And then um, the job manager is just doing the propagation to all the worker nodes. I would like to emphasize here that this propagation is not doing in a plain text channel. It's secured by normally in the TLS channel, um, which is not unbreakable, but um, um, it's, it's doing its job in a pretty good uh, way. Um, and yeah, what does this solve? Um, in this case, the single node is doing the authentication basically, which is scaling well, at least we have seen it's, it's doing its job well. Um, previously we have seen that after 200 nodes or 200 plus nodes, the KDC server was just started to cry and doesn't really like the, the, the original old fashioned way. And uh, see, since the single client is doing the, the authentication, um, there is only one place which must be protected super well. Of course, the others must be as well, but um, the long leaf credentials live in a single place. And um, yeah, that's, that can bring some value in the, in the companies. And yeah, let's get our hands a little bit dirty. Not fully, but um, I just want to highlight a couple of high level parts. So the main intention with these slides and the upcoming things that um, as a developer, when I decided I would like, I, I'm having a, an external system like HDFS or something like this, which is custom, so there is no connector for it. Then there is a possibility to implement it in a pretty easy way, uh, such a connector, which is scaling well and doing all the authentications in a scalable manner. The main message here is that there's a single trait in Apache Spark, which is the Hadoop delegation token provider, which must be implemented. <coughs> the important part here is that the opt-in delegation tokens <coughs> function, where the long leaf credentials must be read and the authentication must be done. Um, some sort of token is receiving back and everything, <coughs> the token wise, will be stored in the uh, user group information when somebody is um, doing some security work, then that's a central part of the authentication system of Hadoop. And this class must be just compiled, packaged, put into the class pass, and everything else will be handled automatically. And what is anything else? Um, one can, one can uh, ask that. The everything else is that when somebody starts a, a Spark workload, it doesn't really matter if it's a streaming job or a, um, um, just a SQL job, um, Spark will 
know that hey there is an external plugin here which must be loaded and it loads it with uh, with the um, service loader that's a, a java construct it calls this uh, obtain delegation uh, tokens and propagates automatically the tokens to the worker nodes and it will be, it will be used for um, authentication in case of failure it will re-trigger this one <coughs> and the most important and, and fancy part is that it constantly checking the expiration time of these tokens and when it's near of the expiration time rightly before that it does this pro process again and again until the job is just stopped um, so that's mainly about it a um, couple of things about this it's really important that it's production stable it's there for maybe five six years so um, it's pretty tested um, there is however limitation here and uh, namely it's a uh, Hadoop specific so only Hadoop specific components can be <coughs> integrated with that with some expect, uh, exception I will show that um, and yeah there are uh, example implementation the, in the upstream community code like the HDFS, Hive, HBase and Kafka which is an easter egg here I've added this part uh, by myself though it's not Hadoop specific uh, not Hadoop compatible uh, component uh, we were able to add this uh, functionality so that's also scaling well um, and yeah Apache Flink side so <coughs> um, I, I've done a couple of uh, or dozens of work in the Apache Spark community and later on I have joined the, the Flink community and um, I faced basically the same problem so same problem similar solutions <coughs> So basically, we have created, um, of course, in a different language, um, really similar construct with some differences. Um, here we have the delegation token provider con concept, which does the exact same thing, but what in Spark we have talked about. Um, this responsibility, so this class responsibility, is to obtain the token, serialize it to a binary, and send it blindly. That's all what it does. The implementer must implement another um, interface, which is the receiver side. And that's, that makes it fully flexible. So when somebody is implementing the, um, the receiver side, nothing else must be implemented, just do the deserialization of this binary. And all of a sudden, uh, the tokens are there in the hands and the user or the implementer can basically decide what must be done with that. And that's a um, pretty good decoupling from um, authentication protocol perspective because Flink has nothing to, Flink has no idea what's going on underneath. It, it just sees that, okay, I need a binary which must be sent to all the worker nodes and the implementer side can decide what should be done with this. But the concept is exactly the same. And yeah, a couple of um, interesting things. It's also production stable. So this feature is um, quite new. So last year we have uh, put it into um, production. So uh, basically we have contributed to the upstream community. There are, of course, here uh, example implementations like the HDFS, S3, and HBase. Um, I would like to personally add Kafka as well, but we will see how it goes. As mentioned, it's authentication protocol agnostic, um, which means anything, practically anything can be transferred. So some of the people in around the world are using for TLS certificate propagation or, or whatnot. And the interesting part, and I think I, I find it funny that some of the people are using it even for signaling, not just for <laughs> authentication. Um, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Um, before we go on, just some takeaways. Um, yeah, so authentication in distributed system can be quite problematic, and these problems can be uh, long-lived credentials from many places. The other problem is the scaling, because not every authentication server is scaling well. Of course, there are which are scaling well, but not every. 
um, obtained the tokens in a single place and distributed to all other nodes is one um, working in production example, which is <coughs> um, a, a good one. Apache Spark has a, a, a Hadoop-specific solution. Maybe it's, it's going to change in the, in the future, but at the moment it's really bound to Hadoop. However, in Flink, um, we have a, a totally uh, authentication protocol agnostic uh, solution, which is pretty flexible. Only a, from developer perspective, only a single small plugin must be implemented um, with two classes, uh, put it into the class pass, and everything will happen automatically. Both of them are stable in production, and it's used in, in large-scale systems or not large-scale deployments, like 1,000 node deployments. Um, and until now, we, we have not seen any problems with that. Hopefully, it stays like that. Um, and that's mainly it. Um, there is a um, hopefully pretty good documentation about the internals, because there are a huge amount of internals in it. I didn't want to bore everybody with that. Um, I have put the uh, link here, and um, basically, hopefully, hopefully I can show that. So this is the documentation. There is a. I don't want to read everybody, but there is a quite complex situation here. Um, hopefully, we did a pretty good job to understand the the underneath uh, things because. As mentioned, it's complex, and there are other materials which can be read. What are these tokens? How they are scaling? What are they doing? And then stuff like that. Um, and that's basically it. Just coming back here. Seems like it's not going to do what I want. So that's about it. So. Nothing else to say. Here is my GitHub and email address. So if somebody is willing to implement a custom um, authentication uh, plugin, then um, I can be bugged. Um, please use it if you find it useful. Thanks.